My apologies, first of all, because the bus is uh, slightly delayed. It should be here within the next uh, 10 minutes, we hope. And then we can all jump in and uh, hopefully we'll come right in this lovely Halifax weather. Um, so thank you very much, Arsenal, for once again inviting us here. Thank you very much, Arsenal. Uh, my job is to introduce the gentleman sitting next to me on my left. Um, he will go in into no introduction. It's always a pleasure to introduce him. He has a lifetime of service to people, to humanity. Uh, all over the world, not only in this country, but literally all over the world. He's a man who has often stood alone on one side of the argument, even when the prevailing narrative was all against him. Sometimes, even when his own party, the Labour Party, were against him, he, he was there, standing up and speaking for the minorities, wherever they were affected. Somebody mentioned earlier on that he's done a lot of work on Kashmir. Yes, he has. For over four decades, he's uh, defended the rights of the Kashmiri people to have their own plebiscite and to make decisions uh, regarding their own countries in their own country. Uh, he's also fought for the rights of the Palestinian people as a road. He has travelled many times to Gaza uh, by road, travelling in his own 4x4 jeep, sleeping, eating and resting in his jeep and travelling during the day and the time the long nights. So he's a man who's given a lot of service to people like us all over the world. And then sometimes there comes a time when people like us must then stand by a man like him. And this is a, a vital time now we need to stand with him. Three years ago we, the people of Bradford, elected him to be our Member of Parliament. And he's done a brilliant job. Our enemies will never always openly admit that. Remember, he was only an MP for three years, not the full five years that any other Member of Parliament would get or would have got. So in three years he has done great deeds for our great city in Bradford. And we're hoping that Sister Asma will do a similar good work for this community here in Halifax. <coughs> Can I introduce to you a, a man who has been a Member of Parliament for six times, and that's around over 30 years, I think, sir, people in this room who are younger than that and may have a, a shorter lifespan than the lifespan of his uh, candidacy or his presence in, in Parliament. A man who has travelled many miles to come and stand with us here in Bradford and in Halifax. You all know him, Member of Parliament for Bradford West, and hopefully again in the next coming days he'll be elected once again as our Member of Parliament Bradford West again. Please give him a warm Halifax welcome, Mr. George Gavin. This is Raoul Kamala here. This is Tara Asma. Dear brother, respected elders, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I apologize that my voice going a little bit. I've been talking on top of that bus and at public meetings day and night for the last uh, five or six weeks. Indeed, as uh, Arshad uh, reminded you, I was a bit dismayed because my wife thinks I'm only 45. <laughs> but in fact, for many decades, I have been standing up, speaking up standing up for our rights. I don't feel a foreigner to you. I feel a part of you. I feel a part of this great Ummah, which could be great, should be great, and one day will be great. But God helps those that help themselves. And if you don't help yourself, if you don't respect yourself, why would anybody else respect you? If you give your votes cheaply, to anyone, whatever they do, whatever they don't do, however they let you down, however many times, why should they do any different? <laughs> Professor Einstein, the greatest Jewish genius of them all, said that the definition of madness is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. If you do the same thing over and over again, you'll get the same result. How could it be otherwise? 
and so if the people in this constituency send the same people back to power, then nothing will change. And that's what we have to persuade the public of between now and Thursday. And you have the example of Bradford just a few miles away. It was something from Allah. We arrived 19 days before Jose. And in that 19 days, I went to Cairo in order to stand in Tahrir Square and then flew back to Bradford. So 19 days minus 3 days in Cairo means 16 days. And in 16 days we shook the world. Well, certainly shook the country. It was uh, <coughs> prescient of me because I must have known that I wouldn't be allowed into Cairo for long. And now I'm banned again by the military junta. But at least I got there in 2012. But we turned everything upside down in Bradford. And that's what you need to do in Halifax. <coughs> because I promise you this, you probably know it, given the level of family and friend relations between Halifax and Bradford. We have got the Labour Party in Bradford scurrying around like headless <coughs> Their council candidates are saying to people on the door, yes, vote George for the big vote and vote me in the little vote. That's how little confidence they have in their parliamentary candidate. That's how little confidence they have in their ability to stop us growing bigger and bigger. We now have five councillors on Bradford City Council, of whom one is Sister Asma, about whom more in a moment. That means we have the balance of power. That means Labour has no majority. That means they cannot pass anything except with our agreement. And after Thursday, when we hope to go from five to six, seven, eight, nine, even potentially 10, we'll have a firm grip on that balance of power as it's possible to imagine. And nothing that is bad will be allowed to pass. And only that which is good will be allowed to pass. But according to today's newspaper, we're not going to just have the balance of power in Bradford City Council, we're going to have it in Parliament too. <coughs> God is great and works in mysterious ways, but on the current projections, Ed Miliband will be one vote short of a majority, and I hope to be that vote. And of course I'll put him in, because I can't put Cameron in, I can't put Clegg in, and I will put Miliband in, but only on condition that he delivers for us. Only on condition that he promises action on the six points that I have projected, and you may well have read them. All five, the first five, are all about Bradford, but the sixth is applicable across the world. My sixth condition, when Miliband calls me next weekend, inshallah, is that, yes, I'll put you into Downing Street, but only if you guarantee me that in your first we, the British government will recognize the state of Palestine. And thus, the Bradford, <laughs> the of the Balfour Declaration almost a hundred years ago, which caused all this trouble, which gave away Palestine to the Zionist settlers, will have a Bradford Declaration, which at least brings some justice to the Palestinian people a hundred years later. We have people praying for respect, success in Kashmir, in Iraq, in Palestine, in Gaza, in Syria, in Yemen, in Mirpur. We have people praying for us all over the world, including people who can't vote. The people in Gaza are sending messages by video saying we cannot vote, neither here nor, nor there. But you can vote for us. You can vote for honor, for dignity, for respect. The Arabic word for respect is ihtaram. 
Ihtiram is a very precious word. It's more precious even in Arabic than it is in English because it means something at the core of a real man, of a real woman. It's something at the core. It's hak. It belief, it's, it's belief in what's right. And as I said at the beginning, if you don't respect yourself, no one else is going to respect you. We mean what we say, but we say what we mean, and what we mean is what you mean. We speak for you, and we are not afraid. Now, when I first met Councillor Asma, <coughs> someone told me before she came into my office that she's a Labour Councillor. But I knew as soon as she was sat opposite me that she was my judge, that one day she would be with us. And I said to her, that very first time, you should come to us. Because you're not like the rest. You're not a sheep. You're a lioness. And I knew that she was even before she became a candidate here in Halifax. But everything I've seen about her campaign, and when I saw her on the BBC television last week, which she only had a few hours' notice for, she didn't even have time to go out and buy a lipstick. <laughs> she had a few hours' notice on it, but she wiped the floor over. She was dominating that panel in a way that made me very proud, indeed, that she was our candidate. <coughs> Only God knows what the result will be on Thursday. But one thing I can safely predict, that politics in Halifax will not be the same again. It will not be the same after this as it was before this. We are going to be decisive in this campaign. And no one will ever take you or us for granted again. Because they now know Labour, that they have a competitor that is capable of fighting them on their own ground, amongst their own voter base, and is better than them. Because we are the real Labour. Asma's membership, my membership, Ashad's membership, your brother George's membership. That's probably about 150 years of Labour Party membership. <laughs> when the Labour Party really was the Labour Party. And it was the hope of poor people, working people, immigrant people, the people who needed a Labour Party to stand up for them. And new Labour under Blair and since has become the very opposite of that. So we regard ourselves as the real Labour. We are the ghost of Labour's past. We stand up for what they used to stand up for, we say what they used to say, and we stand up for the people that they have abandoned, if not betrayed. So that's why they hate us, us. Because you always need someone who's your conscience, who's reminding you of what you used to be and what you're supposed to be. That's why they fear us. I don't know if they yet fear us in Halifax, but they certainly fear us in Bradford, and one day they will fear us here in Halifax, in Jewsbury, in Batley, in Leeds, all over the north, where once they were able to weigh the Labour votes, they're going to have to fight for them from now on. Haji Sab, this is our president, President of Bradford, respect. I said we were 150 years of membership. Haji Fakir Sam was 50 years in Labour. That's now 200 years in the Labour membership. So we got here on the front bench. And I was making the point that the reason Labour fears, hates us, is that we stand up for what they used to believe in. That's why all over the north, where they used to weigh the people majorities, they're now going to have to count them very carefully. Indeed. And that's a win-win for you. Because either it means you'll be able to elect real labor, or under our 
Russia, new labor will become labor again. That's our project. To prove to labor that real labor wins over fake labor any time. We win the arguments, we win the people's hearts, and we win when we can the votes. So, I just want to say that if Halifax elects Asma Javed, Councillor Asma Javed, on Thursday, they'll be doing themselves a big favour. They'll be changing everything for Halifax. I hope the bus will be here very shortly and we can all take a trip on top of it. Bus is here. We need a sixth form school. We need to save the accident and emergency. 
There's nothing for the elderly uh, 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 that I've seen apart from the mosques and people's yes. park. And knowing British weather, you'll be in the park one day out of 364 days a year. So these are the sort of things. I want to bring opportunities to Halifax, apprenticeships to Halifax. I want to bring jobs to uh, Halifax. And the biggest thing of all is I want to prove to the people that said to me that Halifax will never vote you, that they were wrong. They can no longer dictate the people of Halifax. So stand up and be here. So now the bus is here, everyone is welcome to get on to it, be careful, and we're going to Halifax. <laughs> Let's go! Let's 
for Councillor Asma Javed Solicitor. They are going to uh, respect candidates.